Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today I'm gonna to tell you how I learned Python in under a month. So my background is a bachelor's degree in finance, which is not very heavy on the computer science or anything like that. And I really wanted to do something like that. So towards the end of my undergraduate degree, I started getting interested in data science. And that's when my interest in Python really sort of began. I was trying to get into a grad school and I took a couple of classes in stats and stuff on Coursera to get ready. But most of those were in R. I didn't really use Python until later on. So when I graduated, the most complex Python programming I'd ever done was just print hello world, which if you know, is the first programming thing you do in a new language. So I was a little bit worse than a beginner. I have no idea what I'm doing. That said, shortly after graduating, I started a job for a large company in my area. And during the training process, they asked for one of my cohort to volunteer for the training process to end a little bit early and to start working on a team who had an urgent need. So I volunteered and I got placed on that team, but the team was actually so busy that I didn't get any really specific on the job training for a few weeks. During that time, they sort of trickled individual things to me over time. And I thought this would be a really good time to try and automate some of that process. So I looked to Python. Now, it's worth noting that if I really just wanted to do that, I would have done VBA, which is what people in the office were already using, but I wanted to learn data science anyway. So I went with Python because, you know, two birds, one stone to kill two birds with one stone. And so during those three weeks where things were a little bit slow for me in terms of actual business responsibility, I basically just went through the book, Automate the Boring Stuff for Python, which is free. And it's basically what I'm recommending anyone who gets interested in Python goes to first. It's a really great learning material. It's a super in-depth introduction to Python. It talks about all the basic programming stuff that you really need to know to get something out of it. And then it actually goes a little bit more in depth on how to automate some business stuff if you're interested in that as well. Stuff like using Python to interact with Excel and web scraping and automating emails, stuff like that. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, or even if you're just interested in learning Python basics without any of that other automation stuff, I still think the book's a really great place to start for you. So that said, if you're ready to dive in, here's how I recommend you go about it. The first thing I would do is I would read through chapter zero which gives a really good introduction into what Python is, what object-oriented programming is, and how to install Python on your local machine, which you're gonna need to do, obviously, to get any further. Don't worry, the setup of Python is really simple and it takes a few minutes at most. Nice. From there, this is a little bit counterintuitive, but I would recommend you go to Appendix A next. And that's because Appendix A is the one that teaches you how to install third-party packages, which you're going to need to do to get through the book and just for any other use case later on down the road, there's probably a third-party package for it. So you're gonna wanna know how to do that. From there, definitely go through chapter one if you're a beginner. And even if not, it's really useful to understand the syntax of Python. Even if you're used to Java, chapter one gives you a brief overview of like the operators in Python, the expressions and things like that. So. It's a good intro to the language, even if you already have some programming skills. And if you have no programming skills, then you definitely need to go through chapter one because that's your primer. That's where all the hello world, the really basic stuff is found. From there, chapters two through five are where you're gonna get most of the foundational Python stuff. That's the first part of the book. And then the second part of the book basically goes into all these automation cases in Excel and email and web scraping, like I mentioned earlier, which may or may not be useful to you. So once you're done with chapter one, chapter two is about what the author calls flow control, which is full of Boolean operators, logical operators, think and and or, logical statements like that, that sort of help you navigate how Python reads your code and how you can make it evaluate statements later on. It's a really good way to begin thinking about programming, particularly in Python. So this chapter is absolutely one that you need to go through. Chapter three is one of the most important, if not the most important chapters in the book. It's a part of what makes Python so easy to use as compared to some other languages. And it's the user defined functions chapter. Basically a user defined function is like a mini Python script within a broader Python script where you make a set of instructions that you can feed various kinds of data to, and it will evaluate all of them the same way. So it's really useful when you find yourself doing many repetitive tasks in a code over and over again. 
put all of that into a function and then just call that function every time you need it. And if this isn't making any sense to you yet, it'll make sense to you once you get to chapter three. Of course. It's easy, not hard. Then chapters four and five are also really important, but for a different reason. Chapter four is on lists in Python. And I like to think of lists as a container which you can just store a bunch of stuff in. So in Python, a list could be a list of numbers. So you've got a five, you've got 10, 12, just a list of numbers. It could be strings, words, it could be any number of things, but it's just an unorganized container in which you can put multiple things and they can all be held together. Lists can be really useful for any number of things. They're often implemented in a lot of different algorithms. So it's a really important data structure to understand. And fortunately, it's really easy to grasp. Then chapter five is on dictionaries, which are a little bit more complex, but still not that hard to grasp. I like to think of dictionaries as like a filing cabinet. And in this filing cabinet, you open up the drawer, you see all these folders, and each folder has a tab sticking out that's got the name that sort of tells you a little bit about what's in the folder, right? So a dictionary is kind of the same thing. You've got a dictionary, which is like the filing cabinet, and then you've got items in the dictionary, which are sort of like the file folders. And each item is made up of a key and a value. The key is like the title on the file folder, and the value is the contents within. So think of it that way. It's a better way to structure data. And the good part about a dictionary is if you know the name of the key that contains the item that you're looking for, you can get it very quickly out of a dictionary where with a list, you don't really have that indexing capability. Again, this will all make sense to you later on if you go through the book or however you learn Python, dictionaries are a really common topic. And if it sounds confusing now, it's a lot easier to grasp than you think. So those are the basics. Cool, 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 cool. Beyond that, like I said, the rest of the book is specific types of automation that you can do or how to use specific packages. Like I believe the book uses a lot of Excel wings and other modules that allow you to interface with Excel worksheets. So if that's something that you're interested in, then definitely check that out. But I do recommend for everybody to just go through all the other chapters anyway, because it's all really useful information. It shows you how to work with third-party modules in Python. And it also allows you to go through the exercises at the end of each chapter, which will not only test your knowledge on the module that you're learning, but you'll also use those basic fundamentals that we talked about a minute ago in every one of those modules. So even if you're not interested in the subject matter of a module, like web scraping, like working with Excel, it's probably still worth your time to go through them just for the practice. And once you get through that, you've got a really firm grasp of the fundamentals of Python. You're by no means an expert, but you know a really good bit about Python, and that's gonna be a a phenomenal base for you to build your knowledge on top of in the future. And if you're interested in building your knowledge past that, what I'd recommend you look into first is a package called Pandas. <laughs> Pandas is a way to interact with data in Python, which sort of resembles Excel or SQL. It allows you to put data into tables with column headers, probably like you're used to seeing. And that's something that's pretty intuitive for people. So it's probably not hard for you to pick up if you've used Excel and SQL. And it's pretty ubiquitous in a lot of Python applications. So I definitely recommend that as a first step after you've mastered the basics. And then beyond that, sort of depends on what you're interested in. Python is a really broadly used application. It's very popular in the world of data science. It's a very common first language for people to use because it's pretty simple to understand and it's very readable. So you can do whatever you want with it from there and there's a lot of options for that. So you'll definitely find something that you're interested in to use it for after you get past the basics. Or maybe you have something that you're interested in using it for now and you're trying to learn the basics for now, but that'll give you a good start. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.